Do you guys remember climbing inside? Yeah, that's a thing we used to do. What a time to be alive. So in early January, uh, some work friends and I went out to Ottawa and while we were out there, we managed to check out a gym called Climat in the heart of the small English speaking Quebec town called Wakefield. Here we are on the downtown strip. It's not, uh, it's not, not a very busy town. Anyway, I'm really glad we managed to come out to this facility because it impressed me in a lot of different ways. Uh, first of all, it is a new build construction. So the entire building uh, is custom built for being a climbing gym. Right off the bat, a nice feeling in the lobby. I like when you see a lot of wood, warm lights. It just felt good. Now it serves a small town, but Climat is located about 30 minute drive from Ottawa. So there's a lot of traffic, probably especially on weekends of people coming in from the big city for sessions. Still fairly small gym. Located here on the ground floor, you see an accessible washroom, a water station, free coffee if you bring your own mug, and then lots of little homemade snacks created by an event bakery just down the street. I tried a couple of these. All of it was really good. And if you don't bring your own mug, you can always try and guilt trip the person behind the desk to borrow one of theirs. This is the climbing wall on the ground floor. In fact, this is pretty much the only climbing area. We got here at a time where lots of people were in town for Canadian Nationals, and we all showed up to this gym around the same time as everybody else, so you have all these out-of-towners trying this gym for the first time. This wall is a concave wall, so you've got the seating area in the center and then the climbing wall around three sides of you which is something that in the long term can sometimes be a hindrance because you're forcing a lot of people into one small seating area. Um, and when you have inside corners, it might make some fall conflicts. But given the amount of traffic while we were there and maybe their regular traffic for the next couple of years, it seems like a reasonable setup. And it's nice getting to sit in one area with everybody else that's climbing. This wall was built in 2019 along with the rest of the building by on-site and we just happened to come on a week where these three beautiful on-site volumes are on the wall and it created definitely the, the centerpiece of the entire gym. It just goes to show what a really nice line can do where all of the best climbs felt like they were in this one particular section when we visited. This is the little cave around the left side of the wall. Pretty much the only major steep area. And just a quick aside, this is how they do their grade tags. The monkey, by the way, was for the kids' climbs. Otherwise, they just etch a number into the wood tags. The seating area is nice and versatile. You've got these multi-level benches uh, with space for your stuff and also just room to sit. And then, of course, that big, long communal table in the center, which I also really like. This is a no loose chalk gym, so instead they have these liquid chalk dispensers, which I saw their staff refilling. Uh, basically operate just like a soap dispenser. And they've got some little bags full of uh, uh, little chalk bags if you, if you really need it. But the best part about this gym is how much there is to discover as you start moving around. As you go upstairs, you get to this little nook where you've got a table in this work area. You can kind of see through the, uh, through the stairs the climbing wall that we were just at. And then right in front of us is kind of like a uh, root setting bar, cafe kind of thing. This is where all the holds and volumes were left out. And the owner was telling me that this is a little messier than usual, but you've got some seating space, which I think would be amazing for when your root setting crew shows up in the morning, everybody's still drinking their coffee and figuring out the plan for the day. And of course there's all this room for storage. And then there's a little door, which apparently takes you to the hold washing area and the further storage areas. Then as you keep going up to the stairs, uh, you get to the third floor, which is mostly fitness equipment. And this gym was built to 
function as an excellent fitness facility aside from the climbing, as you can tell by how much equipment and how much space was dedicated to this stuff. You've got lots of bikes and lots of rowing machines and treadmills. And the great part about this gym is how many windows there are in the facility. No matter where you are, you seem to have uh, a view to the outside when you're on this uh, upper level. And of course, hang boards and your hanging equipment. In the center of this upper level, you've got access to the showers and uh, more additional washrooms up here. And some more uh, fitness stuff. Some uh, money shots of the <laughs> other equipment. Later at night, you can see the sun's already gone down at this point. And this just kind of gives you an idea of the feeling of this gym, of how it is a relatively small area. You don't have those giant open Costco-like spaces of so many typical gyms, but it still feels really cozy. And this little loft is kind of the fourth floor where you can see people just taking a minute to chill out, stretch, cool down in a setting that is still connected with the rest of the building, but also kind of intimate and uh, kind of secluded. And if the mirror is doing a good job of foreshadowing, you'll see the real reason why we came here in the first place was to check out the kilter board. Not many kilter boards in Ontario or Quebec right now, so this was our chance to try this thing out. I'm not going to do a full review of a kilter board right now, but this particular situation where we were with a large group of other climbers that were all visiting, and you've got the windows behind you and all of these bean bags made for a really fun experience for a bunch of us trying this out for the first time. A kilter board along with all of the other boards, the tension board, the moon board, all that stuff. As a, as a gym guy, I'm a little bit skeptical too of whether or not it's worth the investment. But I did enjoy playing around with the tech on this. And just like pretty much everything else from Kilter, the fit and finish was excellent. It's such an impressive board to just look at. And I have to admit, even though I don't climb very much, I did have a good time on the wall. If you're interested in more thoughts on the Kilter board, maybe leave a comment. I've been considering maybe doing a review of it and comparing it to the other uh, walls. Not sure if it's necessary, but I do have some thoughts about that stuff. So if you're if you're interested, leave a comment and uh, and maybe we'll do something something in the future just to share my thoughts. And why not? Just so you can see what a giant six foot two crap climber looks like on the kilter wall. Here I am climbing something that I think was set by Jackie Huffley. When I first got to this wall, I was like, oh yeah, kilter board, it's all jugs, it's going to be way too easy. And somehow, it's just an Ian Powell thing, somehow you can fall off jugs real easily on this wall. And that's the last time you'll ever see me rock climb on camera. So I loved so much about this gym. I loved this little space where the ladders were nestled. I loved the big communal tables. I loved the benches that were the exact right height, whether you're facing the wall or inside. I loved these little hangers for your phone. Such a great build for such a, uh, for such a young gym. It was really impressive, and it might have been one of the most comfortable, coziest climbing gyms I've ever visited. So props to the Climat team. If you enjoyed this tour, leave a like, subscribe, donate on our Patreon, or just join us in our Discord. And if you're ever in Ottawa or for some reason in Wakefield, make sure you check out Climat. It's an excellent gym.